Some folks often bemoan the fact that there aren't the characters there once were in the countryside. But it's all just a matter of how hard you look. Everywhere in our wonderful county there are still great people around, and the North York Moors village of Egton has been home to one of them all his colourful life. Known as Mara, Tony Harlands, to give him his real name, is what you might describe as a character and a half. He doesn't go more than 30 seconds without smiling, <laughs> laughing and generally exuding enthusiasm. And I bought a set of clippers for 48 tons and I couldn't care for them and I clipped sheep and paid for them in 10 days. Sixpence a sheep. So lots of sixpences for 48 quid, isn't it? <laughs> and that's what we know, you see. Uh, but I'm not bothered. As as happy as a fellow with 20 million. You know what I mean? I ain't it. I never have it. But I was happy. And that's me. Hello, little dog. She thinks of all of us. People seem to love to hear what Mara has to say. With his appearances on Radio York, in the local press, and with his naming as Yorkshire Farming Personality of the Year by Yorkshire Farming Magazine. called Mara, and yet to me, it's friend. A friend to you, if anybody I can help, body, body idea. I love it. And I think that's, if, uh, as one block says, he's a customer of mine, Joe Wood, and he says, well, he says, if every oh, country was full of Maras, he said it'd be a wonderful spot to live, but it would just be a running and no a late. <laughs> <laughs> so that sums it up, like. And I just love helping folks. Well, the Dales port, the foxes, they're dying out. Uh, once upon a time, there was a living in Dales, but there's so many good jobs today. Our farmers' sons, they're leaving for better jobs. And when we grow out, we do, it's frightening for, there's a farm comes up to let, it goes to the next farm. And there's fewer and fewer and fewer getting. There's so many, like I didn't care about myself, I just work 24 hours, six, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean. Nobody's going to get up at one o'clock in the morning and carve a cow or see to the cow. Some need to have a cow on carving, I won't go to bed. Well, a, a young lad in today, he can go get uh, computer jobs, office jobs, and it's nine till five, he's finished, he gets his holidays. I've never had a holiday in my life. I didn't know what a holiday is. I didn't know whether I would like Jan. But I've never had Jan, but I was happy, you see. And uh, it's the way you chose to go. We're a different type of breed of everything. And wait till you look after the countryside and things has changed. There's more folks coming out in the countryside walking and DEFRA's making more regulations. It's making it harder and harder all the time. And I didn't know it's frightening to see what'll happen when I've finished, which I hope not have other ten years, but I just didn't know the future in a farming, I sure. As its name suggests, the Cleveland Bay emanates from the Cleveland area of North East England. Without doubt, it is Britain's oldest breed of horse. Now, the Cleveland Bay is listed as a Category 1 rare breed with only 500 or so to be found worldwide. It's a shame if all these little village shows pack in. I take Cleveland Bay showing, we do a lot of that like. They're a dying breed. At Tom Wren's farm, only a few miles from the breed's birthplace, Mara still strives to bring this fascinating breed to the attention Tom, of the world. Yeah, we'll, we'll be showing that in this time, aren't we? Uh, well, we like showing. Um, Tony likes it. He, when we first started, he fitted our mare on, and uh, it's a bit bothering really because all the other people he fitted on are all died. It's just Tony and me left. Um, we do just the local shows. We don't go far because. Until recently we'd been dairy farmers, so we had to milk either end of the day. And uh, it does the horses good to get them out, and people can see them and see what they are. And uh, it's just, I suppose, really a social event. Well, this is, the, this is a goodish mare to me. I rather like her. This is Diana Shord, because she has good big feet and uh, black markings. You ain't ever a speck of white on them. If they ever speck of white on them, they're not a true Cleveland bear. They haven't have one hair on them. And a good, like, 
a big good Roman nose, that isn't so bad, but falls better. Falls back to its stamp of original Cleveland Bay. He's a good fall, he's this like, but it's like he's only a day, two days old. And they're all a bit gangly, but it, he has a good big Roman nose. Uh, black feet and good feet and all. They want to be big at bottom here, like, like dinner plates, as they say. And, uh, and it's so a native breed, isn't it? They're so versatile. But to me, personally, they're just a bit slow. <laughs> but uh, a lot of folks hunt them and they're good, reliable, because they'll go forever. They're as hard as iron, like, you know. And you can do so many things with them. Compare them with a blood os or a cart os. Well, you can't ride a cart os, and a blood os we ain't there, sort of blood osses. But these will go through anything, you know what I mean? Steady, girls. That's it, you'll be all right. The thing about Mara, horses have been his life. As, you know, he's bred ponies and been through the pony games and... Jim Carter, and then he's gone on to hunt a trial in an hunted. So he's put a lot of years into horses, so he has this knowledge with him. He carries this knowledge with him. So when we go to the shows, he's eyeing the horses up, and he's judging them before we even get to the show. See, and we're doing this for real. Whoa, that's what. So he knows what's what. And then when we're working among them, you know, you've got to be able to tell how they're going to react under different circumstances. Steady, steady. steady. And uh, that's where Tony's knowledge comes in. You see, if you notice the gallop like, and them little fools go far too fast for what they can control, they just need to go into the fence and go out belly up, then next about you have it vet coming and stitching, and once it's had a white mark on it, you know, it's stitched up. It blemishes them for, for a long time, you see. Well, it's there forever. It's like you're having a scar and uh, it degrades it. So just so I know when there are falls like that, uh, we, we, you know, they, they get a bit upset. And the speed that can go, and it's danger, you see. Uh, and just be patient. They'll, in a way, like, fall, mothers are absolutely... When you see them go down there, did you just notice that fall was tight to its mother? Like, and it, it won't leave its mother a bit. Well, the mare goes and it goes, and they never see danger, and they can go through a fence, and then we have a big vet bill at the end of the day, like, you know. So, especially when they're just two or three days hard, but in a week's time, it'll be totally different altogether. Hey, it will be sad when Tom finishes, because look, we don't see a lot of young'uns coming... Do you, no, do you see a lot of young'uns? There's no young ones now, is there? We meet a few at Shaw's, didn't yeah. we? What sort of try to keep it going. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, for instance, Tom was telling me, you were saying, weren't you, Tom, about Rydale and Cleveland's what we were saying. Yeah, Rydale, sure, they get plenty of entries, but there isn't many Cleveland's turn up. So they're saying unless they get more Cleveland's in the classes, the Cleveland classes are going to go. So that's like going to be start at tip of the iceberg, tea. That's, that's right, yeah. Like they won't have a class, yeah. then you'll get... So fewer classes, Tom, eh? That's right, yeah. See, it looks good. It's just going to One day it's going to run itself out, yeah. which is sad. Yeah. Unless we can do something different. <laughs>